welcome to another episode of the Get Good at Business Spotlight. I'm so excited to be with you today and to be talking all about how to get good at business across different backgrounds, industries, and even different parts of the world. But before we get into that, I am your host, Taylor Proctor, your business coach here to help you get good at business so you can get back into the heart of why you got into business in the first place. And today I am joined by Sarah Ibrahim. She is a recovery coach and spiritual mentor who has transformed her battle with addiction into a beacon of hope. She founded the Recovery Lounge, a community that merges holistic recovery with joy and empowerment. Sarah's mission is to show others what's possible once they choose to recover, inspiring healing and growth. Join her as she shares her vision for a brighter and addiction-free future. And the recovery coaching is for those who are wanting to rebuild their lives after addiction. So, so excited. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing such an incredible topic, topic with us today, Sarah. Thank you for having me, Taylor. I'm really excited to be here. Absolutely. So let's dive into the background, right? What led you to really create the Recovery Lounge and how has that shaped the mission of the Recovery Lounge today? Yeah, so I am in recovery myself from cocaine addiction. So next month, actually three years clean, which is at one point Congrats. in my life. Never yeah, would have believed that. Thank you, my darling. And it's been one heck of a journey. And so, you know, my recovery journey has been very, very public. I went live on my Facebook just five weeks in to say like, hey, world, I've had a coke problem and I'm doing this live to hold myself accountable, basically. And I kept hearing about the benefits of community, right? So whether it be 12 step or, you know, fellowship groups, essentially. But for me, I was just like, no, I'm happy to do my own thing here, using Facebook to just hold myself accountable and inspire others. Well, eight months into my journey, I stumbled across the the Recovery Coach Academy purely by accident and ended up doing some training with them. And I'm now a qualified recovery coach. But what happened was as soon as I connected with them, I got plugged into a recovery community. And I was like, oh, my days. This is what everyone's been going on about all of this time. And my eyes were opened. And so it's been laid on my heart for, I want to say, two years now to bring this community to life. But it hasn't happened for one reason or another. But now's the time. And I'm so excited to be here, to be able to facilitate this, to bring people together in a different way. Like, it's go time. Yes. 2024, the year of getting it done. That yeah. is amazing. And again, congratulations. Three years sober is such an incredible achievement. And then to be able to take that and turn it into such a service-based and beautiful business that you are launching like right now, that's incredible. Makes sense of the chaos, Taylor. You know, I just I gave away so many years and it would be so easy to look back on it and regret it and go like, it was a waste. But doing something like this it gives it meaning, gives it purpose and helps me to help people. Yes. Mm. So one of the things that we do here on the show is through, we help entrepreneurs get good at business through the I move method. And that stands for intuition, marketing, operations, strategy, which is velocity, baby, and execution. So Sarah, it seems to me like, especially in a, an addiction recovery type of space, there's a lot of times where you can connect back to your intuition and that can play a pivotal role in what you're currently building. So can you share a specific instance where you've utilized your intuition in that way? Yeah, absolutely. All day long. So I ran a program back in I want to say October last year, it was called Transformation. And when this thing, like the idea came to me, Transformation, and I was like, okay, what is this? How long is it? What is the content of it? Like, what am I promising? What's the outcome? I didn't actually know any of that. And yet I went ahead and sold it. People signed up, they joined the thing. Like, and I knew, I knew in my heart that it was going to be awesome and it was going to deliver a transformation. But transformation is so subjective right it means one thing to you one thing to me one thing to the next person and so I didn't want to promise that you was going to get from here to here what I did want to promise was that whatever your idea of transformation was that I was going to help you to lay the foundational pieces to make that possible to get you where you wanted to go and so it was all intuitively guided I literally showed up for 31 days every single day in October using telegram 
and just delivering whatever it was that was laid on my heart that day, just really short audio messages into the group. And depending on what they came back with, that would then impact the next day's content and so on. So it literally was built 100% on intuition and a shit ton of trust. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Queen, I love that. Because you know what? There is so much, so many pieces of entrepreneurship and getting good at business in most instances means that you are building it as you go. Because if you tried to figure out all those little details and get it in place, now you're delayed three months before you can even start marketing it. And then it's lost all the energy, all the intuition behind it. And that audience that needed you isn't there anymore. So I love that. That's such a great way to utilize your intuition, to build it as you go. And I love that too, because it seems like you're doing that right now with the recovery lounge as well. Like you're building it as we speak. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all about like providing what it is that people actually need rather than just pulling things out the air and going like, oh, here's, you know, 25 different trainings that I think you need. Right. Nobody's going to watch them and they don't actually help. It's all about listening and, you know, building it together. That's what community is, right? It's a collaboration. It's a joint effort. So yeah, I'm excited to to see where this goes. And it's absolutely not the Sarah show. That's one thing that I keep saying again and again and again. Yes, I'm bringing it together. Yes, it was my idea. But it's absolutely not me that's got all the answers and that knows everything. Like, come with your ideas, come with your, you know, willingness to share and let's create something amazing together. Absolutely. So let's move to the M in iMove, which stands for marketing. And I love that. I think you've kind of touched on this a little bit. Like, it's not the Sarah show. It's bringing people in and it's offering your clients, your community, what they need versus what you think they need. But how have you been able to most effectively market that? So for me, Facebook is my baby. Basically, it's my stomping ground. It's the platform where I'm most visible and have the most traction, despite various attempts that, you know, Instagram and all these other places. Facebook is the place for me. And so I tend to show up live quite a lot on my feed and just really deliver value and inspiration and, you know, show all the, the insides and the app. And the outside you know like you'll sometimes see me there howling my eyes out going like this is not a good day but here's how we get through it etc and so for me it's really about creating meaningful conversations speaking on podcasts you know speaking at events any opportunity to really get out there in front of new people and I am there for it yes queen I love it I love it I love it and I think that there's a piece that you didn't specifically say, but I think it is so important to mention, which is that authenticity, right? You're showing up even on your bad days. You are talking to your audience, making those connections, even when you don't feel like it, but you're showing who you really are without a mask, without a cover, without trying to be perfect for your audience. And that gives them permission to do the same for you, which is an amazing marketing piece that I think so many entrepreneurs don't pay attention to. And I love that. 100% authenticity is one of the leading values inside of my business absolutely is I think there's a lot of sugar coating that goes on you know and it's just like look not every day is going to be sunshine and lollipops it really isn't however even on the bad days we can still get through it here's the proof absolutely so now let's talk about operations right uh whether it's for your event before or what you're building now what operational systems or processes have you put into place to really support the growth of what you're doing? Sure. Um, so first of all, there's an application process to join the recovery lounge because it's really important to me to protect the integrity and the energy of the space. You know, we've got to have the right people in there. And so that's the first thing and probably one of the most important to me, actually. Um, continually listening to what it is that people want what they need you know always asking them questions and providing that space where it's like there's no wrong answer and I'm open to you saying to me you know what like this this bit isn't really working for me can we try something different um making sure that I'm on top of my numbers obviously which I hate in all honesty but you know making sure that the business is taken care of financially so looking at what I'm spending, etc. And another one of my key values, Taylor, is making sure that I am practicing what I preach in the sense of promoting continuous evolution, continuous learning. And so coaches need coaches. I always say that. And so I invest a lot of 
time and energy myself into becoming the master of my craft. And this helps me to really deliver the quality of what I do. Yeah, beautiful. And that's a great segue into the V, which is velocity. Sounds like one of those strategies you're using to implement velocity is working with a coach. What other velocity building strategies are you using and utilizing to help maintain momentum and drive that growth? So I imagine that you're probably angling for something tangible here, but this is more about mindset for me, really. And so it's about just continually reminding myself, what do I want and why do I want it? And those two things just bring me right back, even on the days when I'm like, don't know what I'm doing. Nobody really wants this. What should I do next? You know, when those questions start, them self doubts start piping up, what do I want and why do I want it? I want to make an impact. I want to make a difference. I want to help people. I want to inspire them and show them what's possible. I want people to heal and feel what I feel now, which I never thought was possible for someone like me. And there's others like that out there. And so if I don't show up and I don't deliver, then who is? And so this is one of the one of the main ways that I keep myself on track and keep momentum is just keep reminding myself about that stuff. But also more tangible things like celebrations, like sharing client success stories, things like this, and making sure that the people in my world really know that they're valued, that they're supported, you know, that I'm listening. And so albeit it's a community and it's not a one-to-one container each person knows that they are seen and heard for their own individual circumstances and situations and that that's important to me yes absolutely so some big things happening some incredible community building some real authenticity what are you focusing on in our E, which is execution? What's the major major initiative or project that you are currently prioritizing in your business, in your life? So right now for me, I said to you before, before we came on now, like the recovery land is literally only just launched. So it's embryonic. It's, it's very, very early stages. And so I've got all of these ideas and this vision for it. Like I just know, I know in my heart of hearts, this thing can be huge and for me it's really about scaling it back at the moment and making sure that I lay the foundational pieces before I start wanting to do absolutely everything but essentially the vision for it is for it to be a hub you know for learning for education for hope for support for all of the things and however that looks is however it looks but ah I can't even I can't even articulate it Taylor there's just there's so much so many different components and my struggle is trying to identify where to start to be honest yeah but you have started and it is getting the momentum behind it and it's a big focus and effort for you and I love that for you and I think that our audience here loves what you're doing as well and so let me ask you this how can our audience support you find you connect with you Okay, awesome. So Facebook, as I said, is my baby. My personal profile I use very much as a shop window. So you can find me over there. The way to support me the most is to share my content or engage with my content because the more people that I reach with these messages, the better. You know, even if the message isn't for you, even if it doesn't land with you, the truth is you probably know somebody who's either struggling with addiction or has struggled with addiction. And you may not even know this. And so it's really important to me that the reach is beyond what I've got on my own profile. And that's, that is the number one way you can support me. Beautiful. And so the link to learn more about Miss Sarah here is in our video description. So please feel free to go check that out. And Sarah, I have to say, I just want to applaud and honor you for coming on the show today. Also, I know that you're sick, and so we really appreciate it. But also, I love your candidness, your authenticity, your honesty about where you're at in your business, in your life. You can tell how much you care, how much you want to help the community and give back to the world. And so I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today and helping us all see different areas and different uh, industries where we can get good at business. Thank you.
<laughs> so those of you watching, please stay tuned. We have more Get Good at Business Spotlights coming your way. And if you would like to learn more about the iMove method and how you might be able to apply it to your business, I want to invite you to check out getting a business strategy or business audit and strategy session. In there, we do a two-hour session where we find and fill the gaps in your business. And we set out a 90-day action plan strategy to help you achieve your goals. So I will put that link in the description as well and hope that you can check it out and learn more about how you can utilize iMove to get good at business. So thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more Get Good at Business Spotlights. And thanks again, Sarah, for joining us. And we will chat soon. Mm -hmm.